The old saying, good things come to those who wait, is just that, old. Those good things, you have to get out there and chase them. We see it in the millions of people we fly around the world, all of them living proof. Good things come to those who go. Delta is one of the most well-known airlines in the world, and it is quickly approaching its 100 years in business. It may not come as a surprise, but Delta started out as an agricultural company just like one of their main competitors, American Airlines, which we covered in a previous video. The company was founded in a daring manner and it may be seen as currently highly controversial due to its daring decisions. What bold decisions did a farming airplane company make in order to become one of the most notable passenger airlines? Before Delta Airlines began transporting passengers, it was a crop dusting company called Huff Dallin Dusters Incorporated. It was the first commercial agricultural flying company in the United States, founded on March 2, 1925. The agricultural venture also served as the culmination of military and private investment to improve pest ravaged crops. This posed a serious threat not only to the cotton industry but also to the economy as a whole. The Huff Dallin Duster, also known as the Puffer, was the first farming airplane built to protect cotton fields from a notorious pest known as the ball weevil insect at the time. These insect feeds on cotton buds and flowers and it was really destructive to the fields. One of the first tasks of the Puffer was to dust some of Georgia's famous beech trees. When C.E. Woolman joined the company, he would introduce the company to non-dusting services. Woolman agreed on terms of an airmail contract in the Indian nation. So, a Huff Dallin Dusters pilot named Dan Tobin flew a Fairchild FC-2 on a passenger service from Lima to Talara. Since Woolman had a grander vision for the company, he bought it with other investors at the end of the year. So, with this new ownership, the company was incorporated and thus, Delta Air Service was officially formed. As a result, Waldman acquired a Travel Air S6000B for the company's new purpose of expanding into scheduled passenger services with its new operation. Delta's first flight took 5 hours to complete the 427-mile journey from Texas to Mississippi. The plane could carry 5 passengers, 1 pilot, toilet facilities, and space for hand-carried luggage. The cabins were also warm in cold weather, but passengers could still see the natural wonders below. The first flight was a success and they targeted businessmen that frequently traveled between cities. On New Year's Eve in 1930, the company went through another name change and was incorporated as Delta Air Corporation. After the impact of the Great Depression was over, Delta started its mail service with Stinson Model T planes while also resuming passenger services. These two flights were the first to be performed with a uniform displaying the name Delta Airlines. Integral to the growth of Delta, especially during its earlier years, was providing exceptional customer service as well as high quality service. We believe that an airline has a responsibility to the public over and above the price of a ticket. We try to live up to that responsibility. The airline industry is keenly competitive. All of us have good planes. The only way in which we can excel is in the quality of our service. And this is where the human factor enters. Woolman was said to be saddened when the company grew so large because it meant there was no longer an intimate connection between his employees, causing him to forget or not even know their names. For some time, the airline business has been badly hurt by a scarcity of passengers. The employees wanted to do something for Delta. During discussions about a suitable gesture of appreciation, someone suggested, let's buy an airplane. The economic downturn in the early 1980s caused Delta to suffer from huge financial losses. But as a testament to how caring Delta was to its employees, more than 7,000 workers and relatives raised $30 million through payroll deductions and donations. The money was used to purchase the first Boeing 767 nicknamed the Spirit of Delta. In 2004, Delta began the process of restructuring in order to avoid bankruptcy by adding to its services from Atlanta and by cutting as many jobs as it could. However, 
they were so unlucky that in 2005, it filed for bankruptcy. Change means rethinking every moment of your travel experience. It means getting you through the airport and on the plane quicker. It means better stuff to watch, hear, play, and eat on board. It means more flights to more places on schedules that fit your own. And it's a promise to keep changing. Welcome change. Welcome to the new Delta. In 2007, Delta would return to profitability and relisted on the stock exchange. The challenge of Delta in the present is its emergence from a pandemic-infected world and its return to a pre-pandemic performance. In the words of Delta's founder, C.E. Woolman, quote, I'm optimistic about the future of air transportation. This industry grew upon problems, and it grew because it solved them, end quote. Have you flown with Delta? How was your experience? Let us know in the comments below.